Have you ever wondered what it's like to hang out with the Reach Out Reptiles crew? Well, today the shop is full of people. We just got done with a little bit of a photography session. Uh, Carrots did some really great stuff here. Um, he's got a guy that does a lot of wildlife photography that's doing some really great stuff. Uh, the plan is to be able to actually document a lot of these bloodlines and uh, get the footage color corrected so that we can document all this stuff and uh, really start kind of exposing the public to more what these animals really do look like and, and how you really can't tell the differences between a lot of the localities and stuff. I'm, I'm really just struggling to process the idea that this animal came halfway around the world from a tiny little island that somebody plucked him off of and now we're blessed enough to be able to have some of these babies over here to work with. Yep, big part of me is glad you can't do it anymore. You got the bloodlines. Yeah. Just we, need we, to establish yeah. these guys and get those bloodlines out there. Yeah, we've got the pieces we need. We've just got to get them working together, so. <laughs> Going back to dad. <laughs> All right, how are you enjoying yourself here at Reach Our Reptiles? Oh, I'm having an absolute blast. Okay. I'm only just now kind of like coming down off the high of like first walking in here and then just like the whole like I've seen this place a hundred times, so there's like this weird, I would equate it to like a deja vu of like walking into a place that you feel like you've been because you've seen it, you know, it's like a dream. So it's, it's, it's been exciting. I would say the most recent one I bought is always my favorite. Um, and this is the, my most recent pickup. Uh, she's a Motley, uh, what is she? Motley, oh, Motley Annie. Annie. She had, aw, look at her little face. She's so cute. And she's 50%. Kalatoa, 25% Madu. Oh, she is so cute. I hope She's I got shy. the genetics right, because I don't think I did. I feel like it's something <laughs> else. Whatever. We'll figure that out later. <laughs> so Retix, yeah, I, I have loved Retix like, from the time that I saw them. Um, I'm going to be putting up a video shortly of uh, the, I actually found the footage. I thought I lost it. The footage of me unboxing my first dwarf Retix, my first Retix experience ever, was actually unboxing animals that I bought from Garrett. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to find that, but it's just, I've had ball, five, ball pythons before, and the first time I interacted with one of these guys, you know, it's really seeing just truly how tiny they are. Um, there, there's, there's just no way to describe it. Those first dwarfs that I got, my first retics ever, um, were a, couple, a pair that I got from Garrett that were actually a, a long-term project that he wanted to work on. Um, and uh, so that project, I was able to secure those animals from him. I think he still regrets selling them, but those are, uh, the world's only pair of 50% Slayer Tigers, and they're both 100% Het for Rennet Ghost. So the first, my first ever animals that I bought were world's first animals, um, as for Retix anyways, and my first clutch production from them should have the chance to make a Super Tiger Rennet Ghost Dwarf. That's very exciting. Uh, huge, yeah. So yeah, it's, very exciting. I'm very, very excited, yeah. So you're part of our Patreon. How are you enjoying that extra content? Absolutely. I love the Patreon stuff. Um, it's really exciting. I, I get emails what seems like, you know, almost every day just about, you know, sometimes uh, of just, you know, content that's either stuff that only I get to see, um, stuff that you guys haven't put out yet. So I kind of get a little bit of like a, a, a preview, uh, you know, an early, an early release of, of all the content that's coming out. Um, and, and just the, all, the, all the value that's in, in uh, Garrett's Patreon is huge. Um, I'm not always a, a really big supporter of Patreon, um, but I, I, as with anyone, I think the critics of people that run Patreon, you know, that have Patreon pages, um, need to just simply remember that it's, it's about providing that value. Um, value is definitely relative to every person, but in my opinion and of the opinions of everyone else I've talked to that's, that's currently a patron of, of Reach Out Reptiles, the value is huge. Just the knowledge and the, uh, that I've gained um, that I normally maybe wouldn't have been able to due to you know having a little extra access to Garrett and, and his team um, has been tremendous. So I, I really I don't have I don't have any complaints whatsoever. I think I think the, what you guys are doing is great. I think I've talked to Garrett and kind of know his direction with it and what you're doing, um, and, and just really like I said going back to it, I think Garrett has a really great team around him uh, that are all really really passionate enthusiasts. Um, we just sat and had lunch together and just talking to everybody about you know the, the things that they have going on at home. It's all animals still, you know, they, they, they really love this stuff 24 hours a day and uh, they bring that passion to the business. So here it's very lucky to have everybody. Yeah, 
Those look awesome. I can see myself in the reflection. That's gonna last like okay. until the end of today. Until the end of today. But look how good those look. They actually like fill up the fenders and you know. What do you guys think? Super dwarf mobile. <laughs> come to visit at reach out reptiles often why do you keep coming back and why do you like coming to visit here uh well because it's cool to check out all the awesome snakes and uh you guys are really close to me <laughs> not a long drive do you have a favorite snake here um i mean the cow's pretty awesome right now Cow. No, yeah. I think everybody does say that what, what's that other little one that was pretty cool the, the oh the one that you were that you were saying you actually want to make that same thing all right, so this is your favorite snake? This is one of them, yep. Yeah, I just like the uh, the pattern with the very circular portholes that are you know, bright white and the contrast that it has and the dark stripe going down it from the motley. Yeah, it's a very pretty snake. I'll be looking to make some of these with two of them that I have. I'll make some 75% super dwarfs with uh, nice. this combo of morphs. So I recently got a phantom on my last trip up here and the plan is to possibly get another phantom to pair to it to make some blue-eyed Lucy's or to get an orange ghost stripe to pair to it to make some of the cows. So we recently recently did a video on your snake room. How did that turn out? And how have your snakes been enjoying the room? Um, I think the video turned out great. The snakes love it. Um, I give them turns, you know, which ones I put in there, what nights, and um, but all of them love climbing around, exploring. So you cycle them out, like mm -hmm. you've let them stay in there for like a day, for like a night for or a night. day? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So like I'll put like a, you know, the large sun tiger female and the male jampeo, which I'm trying to pair up at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I'll put them together in, uh, you know, for one night and then I'll switch it out and I'll put, you know, a few of the females in there the next night and, you know, and then another female male the next night. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that making that room was an awesome idea. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun I, and they definitely enjoy it. So yeah, you know, it gives right, more yeah. enrichment to their lives. So how has um, how has COVID nineteen affected sales and business and just the working environment? The biggest thing I think has just been getting used to all my photographers with their beard masks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, we're outside, so I can uh, take it down. Um, no, like in all seriousness though, most of what we do is online and online sales have still been good. Yeah. Um, it, it's definitely put a wrench in things. So the biggest thing has been people on the waiting list and some of them, especially in the rarer animals like the pure locality animals, they might've been waiting two, three years and then they get laid off a month before the animal hatches exactly. with an uncertain future and they've had to pass on those waiting lists that really sucks for me because a lot of these people, I know they appreciate the animals. I'd love to get the animals into their hands because the animal's ultimate welfare is number one. Right. But now it's like, I can't hold the animal for you until next year or your job comes back or whatever. So it's really mixed sales up. A lot of people have gotten animals just because they sent us private messages and telling us what they want. We had something that someone else on a waiting list had a pass. Mm -hmm. The other thing has just been um, holding all the animals because we were afraid with shipping delays, right. you know, because of how COVID affects the FedEx system mostly Absolutely. and knocked out all of the airline shipping, um, you know, holding every single animal back that we have produced right. until it was safer. So we're shipping now, which is great, mm -hmm. in, but even then in a limited capacity to work around delays. So that's been the big thing. I don't know, what do you think, Rob? Um, COVID-19 affecting our business. Yeah, the fourth quarter projections are looking pretty good. <laughs> Actually, that graph is going in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, it's all going up, so. Actually, we added these two because of COVID, so, you know, or during COVID. Yeah. Um, so Jess is a uh, multitasker extraordinaire. Basically the opposite of me, except for how we're both both rude and and blunt and and like to pick <laughs> on people and be snarky so that we have in yeah. common okay. everything else is opposite so she has a complementary skill set to mine so That's i've been wanting to hire her for a while and then rob actually breeds and keeps reticulated pythons awesome. yeah. so he's been great because he that also is like not as cute as aiden is so if he gets like bit in the face or right. something i don't no, feel bad yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. we're doing another video again <laughs> <laughs> but uh oh, yeah, so, no, but I, I know the animals are cared for with him, so I've actually been able to, like, kind of assemble my dream team after years of careful planning. <laughs> and, uh, I knew that's why. That's I awesome, man.
Isn't that thing gorgeous though? I love this yeah, animal. Yeah. I think this animal is just absolutely beautiful. That's why I like using, you know, the, the Madus and we have a lot of Madu crosses because people didn't really focus on keeping them pure. They just called them super dwarves. Everything got called a Kalatoa. For years, Madus were what was brought in um, and they called them all Kalatoas and mixed them all in, but they really make some of this stuff just pop. Are you using this branch here to put them over or get some photos? No, actually, you should see the setup. Oh, you're it's, gonna hold it's like a, oh, it's cool. like a no background, no, almost like museum style. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All white background, no shadows. It's never a dull moment here at Reach Out Reptiles. We always have some awesome people around. Now here's a video that I know you guys are going to love where I interviewed Kevin McCurley.